Hi guys, so this is an example exam type polarization dielectric problem. Uh, 313 is a little bit too long, so here is something that would be more similar to what you might see on an exam if there is a problem like this on the exam. So fairly likely. Um, okay, so this uh, problem asks you to find the surface charge density and the volume charge density. So you have the charge on the surface and then a charge in a volume. Uh, and then you're using those densities to figure out the total surface charge and the total volume charge. And then uh, it asks you to find Q total. Um, so adding those together should give you zero. So this zero is like the total bound charge. You might see a problem asking you for total bound charge. That's what this is for part C here. So I have our equations all written down over here and what page in the book they come from. So you can look at that section if you want a little bit more background information. Um, but we're going to go ahead and tackle this problem. So first we're going to find the surface charge density. Okay, so to do that, um, I'm going to explain what this equation is for the first one. Let me actually move these guys up a little bit. Um, so you'll see that little n vector uh, next to the polarization vector. So this n uh, is the vector normal to the surface. So in a cube we have six surfaces, right? We have positive z, we have negative z, right? We have positive x, and then we have negative x back here. We have positive y, and then we have negative y back here, so six. And each of those six surfaces have their own normal vector, which is actually the unit vector. Um, so for this case, um, we're actually able to cancel out a lot of things just because of our polarization vector. Um, actually, sorry, I pre-wrote that out there. So let's go ahead and kind of take a look at that. So here's our polarization vector. Um, and when we do this, when we find the surface charge density, we need to usually find it for each of the six surfaces. So let's say like for x and negative x, um, let's look at what that would look like and show ourselves that a lot of that is going to be equal to zero. So if p p s is equal to, this is the polarization vector dotted with the normal vector. So let's say x, uh, positive or negative x. Um, and note that if we have z hat dot x hat, that's going to be equal to zero. So this whole piece is going to go to zero. So we don't have any charge on either of the x surfaces. If we look at y and negative y, right, and we find the um, charge there, we're going to notice the same thing, right, for the positive or negative y. Um, and we can actually cancel that out right away. So positive or negative y, we can cancel that out. And that's going to be equal to zero. So we don't have any charge on the y surfaces. Okay, so now let's look at um, the uh, let's look at z and um, negative z separately. Okay, so if I look at this guy, um, we're going to have z and negative z because we know that dotting it um, with uh, that z value is going to give us a number here. Uh, so we're going to have. Uh, the surface charge density here and we know that z hat dot z hat equals one right so we're going to end up with uh, b z cubed for the first one and we're going to end up with negative b z cubed for the negative z hat okay now for this point we actually have to look at our surfaces um, so this is for the positive z hat and this is negative z hat right um, so for a negative z hat, what is z equal to? We're going to swap out our z right away. So over here, for our negative z hat surface, this one here, our z is equal to zero, where this surface is. For here, um, for our positive z hat surface here, z equals l. Okay? Um, so we're going to go ahead and plug those in. So for a negative z hat surface, z equals zero, and then z equal to L. And so we notice that we only have a surface charge density on the positive z hat surface. So S equals B L cubed. Okay, so we only have it on the positive z hat um, surface. Okay, so this isn't a vector direction. This is just a label here for the, for the um, surface charge density because the surface charge density isn't a vector, but we know that it exists on the positive z hat. Okay, so now we found our surface charge density, uh, and we know that we only have it for one surface. Uh, so that's going to make our math a little easier down the line here. Um, and then we're going to solve for our volume charge density. Okay, so we're dealing with Cartesian here. So this equation that we're given to find the um, volume charge density, rho for density, 
uh, is using the Cartesian del operator. So we have the Cartesian del operator dotted with the polarization vector. So we're going to take our Cartesian del operator um, because we are in the x, y, and z coordinate system. Uh, and then we're not going to forget our negative because we need that here, remember, uh, is equal to z. And then dotted with the polarization vector. So I'm just copying these to make that a little bit shorter here. Um, and then we're going to look at what cancels here. Okay, so we have a um, so we have an x hat here and a y hat, and we know that if we take uh, x hat dot z hat, it's going to give us zero. And if we have y hat dot z hat, it's going to give us zero, right? So those are going to cancel. Feel free to solve that out for yourself and prove it to yourself. Um, but we're just going to end up with the partial derivative with respect to z of b z cubed, okay? And that's going to be uh, equal to the uh, volumetric charge density. Okay, uh, so taking the derivative with respect to z, that's going to give us negative 3bz squared. Okay, so that's our solution there. So we found our volumetric charge density, and then we found our surface charge density, which is just right up here. Okay, so we've got this guy, and we've got this guy. Okay, so we answered part A, so now we're done with part A, right? Um, now part B, they want us to find QSP and QVP, so the total charge. So once we have our charge densities, how we find the charge is we're going to multiply our surface charge density um, by the surface area, and then our volume charge density by the volume. So we need to integrate over the volume and integrate over the surface, so the ds is differential surface, dv is differential volume. So we're going to find ds for our surface and then dv for the volume of the cube. Okay. So. First, for ds for the surface. So we have our surface charge. It only exists on z. So our surface charge, um, we're only interested in the surface charge that exists on the top surface. Okay, so what's our ds for that surface? So what's going to give us the surface area for that surface? Well, um, we have a change in x over here, right? dx. And then we have a change in y over here, right? dy. Okay, so dx multiplied by dy is going to give us the area for um, the, the surface dz, right? So the surface area. So that's going to be our ds, or our dz here. Okay? If you forget that, you can go ahead and refer to the cylindrical cheat sheet and just look up that dsz because we know that we have the z surface. Okay? But this one is a little more intuitive, I think. Okay, so let's go ahead and plug in what we have here. So qs, we're going to solve that one first. So let's take our surface charge density that we found. So our surface charge density is this guy right here, okay? And we're multiplying it by dsz for our surface, right? So we have b, oops, sorry, bl cubed um, multiplied by, what's our dsz? We had dx dy, um, and then what are our bounds for that? Okay, so I'll erase this guy here. Um, okay. So what are our bounds for dx and dy? Well, they're the same for all sides of the cube here. Um, so we have b l cubed, and then we have x and, sorry, we have dx and dy, right? And then we're going from 0 to l, because we know that our length for all sides of the cube is our, they're all l. So for this side, right, we're going from 0 to l for x and 0 to l for y. So L and zero to L. Okay, just so that makes sense with the figure. Okay, and then if we integrate for that, we're going to have x from zero to L, y from zero to L, and then we have BL to the third multiplied by that, QS. And then if we just plug in our bounds here, we're going to end up with, oops, sorry, QS is equal to BL to the fifth. Okay, now we're going to look at our QV here. Okay, so we're going to take what we found before, right, from where we have the integral of the volume charge density that we found right here. So that's negative 3b b z squared. We're going to plug that in. Negative 3b z squared, right? And then our differential volume for a cube, right, is going to be like length times width times height, right? So dx dy dz. Um, so if you forget this, you can look on the uh, cheat sheet for the um, oh, I wrote cylindrical dv Cartesian. So Cartesian here. 
Uh, so just the change in x, change in y, and change in z to give us our volume for a uh, three-dimensional shape. So dx, dy, dz. Okay, and our bounds uh, are going to be from 0 to L for x, y, and for z because all sides of the cube are the same. So pull out negative 3b. And then we do have a z squared, so let's have, so z squared um, dz, right? It's the integral of that over the integral of dy dx. So 0 to L, 0 to L, 0 to L. So we're going to end up with dz is equal to negative 3b times e to the third over 3 from 0 to L multiplied by y from 0 to L multiplied by, oops, x from 0 to L. Okay, so in this case we're going to end up with negative 3b times L to the third over 3 times L times L is equal to QV. Uh, so QV is equal to um, negative B L to the fifth. Okay. Um, so that looks good so far, right? So we have our QS here and our QV there, uh, and then we're going to add them together. So QV plus QS uh, is equal to BL to the fifth minus BL to the fifth is equal to zero. So we found our total bound charge for part C to be equal to zero. Okay, so solving for the last part. So yep, total bound charge equal to zero. All right, um, so this is reasonable for something you might see in an exam. Um, these vector directions might change, so you might have a different, like you might have dsy instead of dsz. Um, so some of these things could change. Just remember um, which unit vectors cancel. Um, remember how to figure out the values for your surfaces, right? Just looking at that figure. And just kind of be careful where you set your bounds there. Okay, and that's it.